Hello everyone, I am Dr. Neegna Agarwal, Assistant Professor, Deendyal Upadhyay College, University of Delhi. Welcome to the session on Financial Management, Unit 4 of the Event Management Module, Part 2. The role of financial management cannot be overemphasized since it has a direct bearing on the financial health of a business. The financial statements such as the balance sheet and profit and loss account reflect a firm's financial position and its financial health. Almost all items in the financial statements of a business are affected directly or indirectly through some financial management decisions. The financial statements of a business are largely determined by financial managerial decisions taken earlier. Similarly, the future financial statements would depend upon past as well as current financial decisions. Thus, the overall financial health of a business is determined by the quality of its financial management. Good financial management aims at mobilization of financial resources at a lower cost and deployment of these in most lucrative activities. This section determines the viability of a business idea and its likelihood of attracting investors. After this part of the unit, you should be able to understand the financial projections of an event management company, the break-even analysis and the profitability ratios of the event management company. Why a financial projection? Financial projection is required for establishing the profit potential of a business supported by reasonable assumptions. Determining the company's capital requirement and its utilization. It is also required to demonstrate how the business will generate cash to operate and repay loans. Financial projection is required to regularly monitor business activities and following the estimated budget. The financial projection can be done with the help of a financial statement that is a formal documentation of the financial activities and consists of details of investments and expenses of an organization. Basically, a financial plan consists of three financial statements income statements that is the projected profit and loss account, cash flow projection or the cash flow statement and break even point and the balance sheet. This is an overview of the financial statements. The income statement categorized into revenue, expenses and profits. The balance sheet categorized into assets, liabilities and shareholders equity and the cash flow statement categorized into operation, investment and financing activities. The income statement or the profit and loss statement. Also known as the profit and loss statement or the statement of revenue and expense the income statement primarily focuses on the company's revenues and expenses during a particular period. An income statement provides valuable insights into a company's operations, the efficiency of its management, underperforming sectors and its performance relative to industry peers. Income statement is very essential as it determines the past and future performance of a company. The income statement focuses on four key items. The revenue, the expenses, gains and losses. 
it does not differentiate between cash and non-cash receipts that is sales in cash versus sales on credit or the cash versus non-cash payments or disbursements like purchases in cash versus purchases on credit it starts with the details of sales and then works down to compute the net income and eventually the earnings per share essentially it gives an account of how the net revenue realized by the company gets transformed into net earnings that is profit or loss mathematically the net income is calculated based on the formula net profit or loss is equal to revenue minus expenses the focus in this standard format is to calculate the profit or income at each subhead of revenue and operating expenses and then account for mandatory taxes interest and other non recurring one time events to arrive at the net income that is applicable to common stock though calculations involve simple additions and subtractions the order in which the various entries appear in the statement and their relations often gets repetitive and complicated let's take a deep dive into these numbers for better understanding The Golden Sports Company received rupees twenty five thousand eight hundred from the sale of sports goods and rupees five thousand from training services. It spends various amounts as listed for the given activities that total rupees ten thousand six hundred fifty. It realized net gains of rupees two thousand from the sale of an old van. and incurred losses worth rupees 800 for settling a dispute raised by a consumer the net income comes to rupees 21350 for the given quarter the above ex- this example children is the simplest forms of the income statement that any standard business can generate it is called the single step income statement as it is based on the simple calculation that sums up revenues and gains and subtracts expenses and losses however real world companies often operate on a global scale and have diversified business segments offering a mix of products and services and frequently get involved in mergers acquisitions and strategic partnerships such wide array of operations diversified set of expenses various business activities and the need for reporting in a standard format as per regulatory compliance leads to multiple and complex accounting entries in the income statement the second kind of financial statement is the cash flow statement The cash flow statement or the statement of cash flows is a financial statement that summarizes the amount of cash and cash equivalents entering and leaving a company. The cash flow statement measures how well a company manages its cash position, meaning how well the company generates cash to pay its debt obligations and funds its operating expenses. The cash flow statement complements the balance sheet and the income statement and it is a mandatory part of the company's financial reports. The main components of the cash flow statement are cash from operating activities, cash from investing activities and cash from financing activities. From the cash flow statement that we have on screen we can see that the cash flow for the fiscal year 2016 was rupees 17372 the bulk of the positive cash flow stems from cash earned from operations which is a good sign for investors it means that the core operations 
are generating business and that there is enough money to buy new inventory. The purchasing of new equipment shows that the company has the cash to invest in inventory for growth. Finally, the amount of cash that is available to the company should ease investors' mind regarding the notes payable, as cash is plentiful to cover that future loan expense. Of course, it needs to be remembered that not all cash flow statements look this healthy or exhibit a positive cash flow. But negative cash flow should not automatically raise a red flag without further analysis. Sometimes negative cash flow is the result of a company's decision to expand its business at a certain point in time, which would be a good thing for the future. This is why analyzing changes in cash flow from one period to the next gives the investor a better idea of how the company is performing and whether or not the company may be on the brink of bankruptcy or success. A cash flow statement children is a valuable measure of strength, profitability and the long term future outlook for a company. The cash flow statement can help determine whether a company has enough liquidity or cash to pay its expenses. A company can use a cash flow statement to predict future cash flow, which helps with matters of budgeting. For investors, the cash flow statement reflects a company's financial health. And since typically the more cash that's available for business operations, the better. However, this is not a hard and fast rule. Sometimes a negative cash flow results from a company's growth strategy in the form of expanding its operations. By studying the cash flow statement, an investor can get a clear picture of how much cash a company generates and gains a solid understanding of the financial well-being of a company. A balance sheet is the third financial statement of importance. A balance sheet is a financial statement that reports a company's assets, liabilities and shareholders equity at a specific point in time and provides a basis for computing rates of return and evaluating its capital structure. It is a financial statement that provides a snapshot of what a company owes and owes as well as the amount invested by shareholders. The balance sheet is used alongside other important financial statements such as the income statement and the cash flow statement in conducting fundamental analysis or in calculation of financial ratios. The balance sheet adheres to the following accounting equation where assets on one side and liabilities plus shareholders equity on the others balance out. That is to say that assets equal to liabilities plus shareholders equity. It reflects the net worth of a business for a particular time period. It summarizes the financial data of business under three heads. Assets that are tangible objects of financial value that are owned by a company. Liabilities are debts that the company owes to its creditors. And shareholders equity, that is the money attributable to a business owners, meaning its shareholders. It is also known as net assets since it is equivalent to the total assets of the company minus its liabilities, that is the debt it owes to its shareholders. The balance sheet is an invaluable piece of information for investors and analysis. However, it does have, uh, it does have some drawbacks. Since it is just a snapshot in time, it can only use the difference between this point in time and another single point in time in the past. 
Because it is static, many financial ratios draw on data included in both the balance sheet and the more dynamic income statement and the cash flow statement to paint a fuller picture of what's going on with a company's business. A break-even analysis is a useful tool for determining at what point your company or a new product or service will be profitable. Put another way, it's a financial calculation that is used to determine the number of products or services you need to sell to at least cover your costs. When you have broken even, you are neither losing money nor making money but all your costs have been covered. Simply explained, break-even point is the stage of no profit, no loss. At this point, the revenue of the business exactly equals its cost. If production is increased beyond this level, profit shall accrue to the business. And if it is decreased from this level, loss shall be suffered by the business. To understand break-even analysis, it is first important to understand a few terminology related to break-even analysis. Selling price. It is the price at which an entrepreneur sells the services of the company to its clients. Fixed costs are expenses that stay the same no matter how much you sell. Variable costs are expenses that fluctuate up and down with sales, like for example, raw material cost or direct labor cost, etc. Contribution margin, which is also known as gross margin or simply contribution. This is, it is the difference between selling price and the variable cost, that is the marginal cost. In other words, fixed cost plus the amount of profit is equivalent to contribution. We can derive from it the prof, uh, that profit cannot result unless contribution exceeds fixed costs. In other words, the point of no profit, no loss shall be arrived at where contribution is equal to fixed costs. For example, if you're organizing one, uh, say, dance show, the selling price of the tickets for which is rupees 1000, and the variable cost of that sale is rupees 600. Then the contribution margin would be sales minus variable cost, that is 1000 minus 600, which would equal to rupees 400. With the above understanding, the formula to calculate the break even point can be in terms of sales as well as in terms of output. The break even point in terms of sales is the fixed cost that divided by the contribution per unit, whatever you receive as the answer that you multiply by the selling price per unit. The break even point in terms of output is the fixed cost divided by the contribution per unit. For example, assume the enterprise has fixed costs of rupees 1 lakh per month. The service provided by the enterprise has a contribution margin of rupees 4000. So the break even point in this example would be 1 lakh divided by 4000. That is your fixed cost which is 1 lakh divided by the contribution margin given that is 4000 which is equal to 250 units in terms of output. The moment 250 units are sold by the company, the company reaches the point of no profit, no loss, called the break-even point. Everything else being the same, all sales after 250 units will result in profit. There can be many complications in break-even calculations, but this example gives you an idea of how the break-even point is calculated for a startup. One must remember that an organization reaches its break-even point before it starts generating profits. The profitability ratios. They are the ones that help to measure an organization's success in generating income. These ratios in combination reflect an organization's 
asset and debt management. Some frequently used profitable ratios are we'll discuss. First is the net profit ratio. It indicates the relationship between net profit after tax and sales. It measures the efficiency with which the business activities, including selling, manufacturing, administration, etc. are managed. A higher ratio indicates a better efficiency of the enterprise. The formula as given for calculating the net, the net profit ratio is net profit divided by the sales turnover multiplied by 100. The gross profit ratio is the ratio that indicates the gross margin of trading and is calculated by uh, the formula net sales minus cost of services sold upon sales into 100. The operating ratio. This is the ratio that establishes the relationship between cost of services or goods sold and other operating expenses on one hand and sales on the other. It measures the cost of operation per rupee of sales. This ratio indicates portion remaining out of every rupee worth of sales after all the operating costs and sales have been met. Higher the ratio, the better it is. Operating ratio can be calculated with the formula where operating cost is divided by net sales and multiplied by 100. In case we are given uh, the cost of services sold, so that gives you the cost of services sold plus operating expenses upon the net sales multiplied by 100. The operating profit ratio. This ratio establishes the relationship between operating profit and sales. This ratio indicates the portion that remains out of every rupee worth of sales after all the operating expenses and sales have been met. Higher the ratio, the better it is, much similar to your operating ratio. Here we can calculate it by the operating profit divided by net sales multiplied by 100 or we can also calculate it by subtracting the net operating expenses and the net and the non-operating income from net profit divided it in it by the net sales and multiplying it by 100. The expense ratio indicates the relationship between various expenses and net sales. This ratio can be calculated for individual items or a group of items. Lower the ratio, greater is the profitability and vice versa. So in a way, it is inversely related. Particular expense ratio is equal to a particular expense divided by net sales multiplied by 100. For example, office expense ratio, we can calculate by uh, dividing the office expenses by net sales and multiplying it by 100. The return on capital. This ratio is an indicator of the earning capacity of the capital employed in the business. Capital employed includes not only equity share capital, but also fixed liabilities, that is capital reserves, revenue reserves, and undistributed profit. Return on capital can be calculated by dividing the net profit that is earned per year by the capital employed into 100, where net profit is equal to the tangible and intangible assets value plus the current assets value minus the current liabilities value. Summing up children, financial management of an event management company involves the most crucial decisions regarding its functioning. Creating financial projections for a startup is both an art and a science. These projections are used to understand the viability and performance of a company. It includes financial statements and profitability ratios. Financial statement is a written document showing credit 
and debit. Income statement, cash flow statement and balance sheet are three basic financial statements included in a business proposal. Profitability ratios assess the ability of a company to generate earnings, profits and cash flows relative to the amount of money invested. For useful conclusions, the profitability ratios of a quarter that is four months should be compared to the profitability ratios of similar quarters in the previous years. Appropriate financial management is essential for any company's success. Thank you and have a nice day.